city is the starting point of our Caribbean journey. Since the time of Columbus, it has been the European idea of a paradise set amid a distant ocean. But beyond the dream was the fact that the original inhabitants were wiped out and replaced with African slaves. Today, independent states have gradually emerged from the dark shadows of an inglorious past. During a boat trip along the coast, some of the island's inhabitants dance, make music and provide entertainment. Their faces exude joie de vivre. They live in a tropical world, on an exotic Caribbean island that consists of Haiti and the Dominican Republic. The drumming of the cheerful musicians becomes increasingly rhythmic and intense as a dancer moves in a trance-like state. People have rhythm in their blood. Their music and dance reflects the deep faith that stemmed from a number of local religions and was influenced by those from Europe. Wonderful beaches and golden sand, tropical rainforest that reaches almost to the sea, and crystal clear turquoise water. A perfect place to relax, in one of the most beautiful places on earth. All the descriptions of this island paradise set amid the Caribbean are true especially the incredible wealth of color that makes it easy to cast aside normal routine. For these people, music and dance are as important as the air they breathe. The island's exotic natural beauty and temperate climate is simply a bonus. They adore their magnificent land. Jamaica, paradise in the Caribbean. Montego Bay, Jamaica's second largest city, is the starting point for tourists from all over the world. Today, there are still many reminders of the time when plantation slaves were forced to work in appalling conditions, and those who tried to escape were soon recaptured. Under English colonial rule, Jamaica continued to laze under the heat of the Caribbean sun, but due to its precarious association with piracy, it did not develop commercially. Not until the serious cultivation of sugar was any real progress made. The slaves who worked on the sugarcane plantations had been ruthlessly separated from their normal cultural existence and therefore sought solace in Christianity. Rose Hall Great House. 
In Jamaica, the British colonial country seats are called Great House, which means mansion. John Palmer had this imposing building constructed on a hill. But his cruel wife, Annie, also known as the White Witch, murdered her husband as well as several slaves. Here there's a special feature, Martha Bray River rafting. Now the leisurely jungle adventure on the Calm River can begin. In front of the narrow swaying craft stands the raft captain who skillfully steers the raft with a long bamboo rod. A tranquil river landscape passes by. Seductively, the dense tropical rainforest shows off all its spectacular colors. It's an excellent way to explore this tropical paradise. Here on the north coast, Christopher Columbus landed in 1502 during his fourth journey to the New World. Close by, the Spanish were defeated by the British in a bloody battle for sovereign control of Jamaica. Many years ago, the last survivors of the Arawak Indians, of whom there were originally more than 100,000, returned to the Green Grotta Cave. Christopher Columbus loved this island. It is the most beautiful that my eyes have ever seen. Dunn's River Falls is the name of a waterfall near to Ocos Rios. In swimming attire, more than a million visitors a year attempt to make their way through the spraying torrents of water, whilst joining hands in a human chain led by an experienced guide. Into Ojos Rios Bay flow not eight, as the Spanish name leads us to believe, but three rivers into the sea. During a visit to the market, there's still a strong atmosphere of the past. Here, various goods are offered, haggled over and sold. Little has changed. The inhabitants of this former fishing village are particularly proud of the turquoise-colored Big Ben. Through meter-high ferns, the winding road ascends the hill outside town. The Cuyaba River Garden is located here, an oasis of relaxation and tranquility. This well-tended botanical garden is open to the public. During a guided walk through the luxurious tropical vegetation, you can discover the names of plants, take in their fragrance, observe colorful fish, and generally enjoy life under the sun. In the language of the Arawak Indians, Koyaba means paradise, land of joy and eternal song. Harmony Hall is the name of a splendid manor house located on a turn-of-the-century plantation. And James Bond Beach is the former winter retreat of English author Ian Fleming, who created British secret agent James Bond. Welcome to Sun Valley Plantation. Our next stop is a visit to the Sun Valley Plantation. 
origin of the coconut is lost in history. But Vasco da Gama brought some... Lorna explains that in 1499, Vasco da Gama introduced the African coconut palm to Jamaica. It seals the coconut off. In addition to bananas, citrus fruits, papayas, melons and apples, various spices are also cultivated here. Expansive fields of coconut palms dominate the plantation. Towards Port Antonio, we visit the overgrown but romantically located Somerset Falls. The footpath which leads to this wonderful display of nature cuts through an evergreen rainforest. Several natural pools are more than tempting for a refreshing soaking. Port Antonio, a boulevard of palms welcomes visitors and leads to the center of the colorful harbor town, which has seen better times. In Harbor Street, the buildings indicate the prosperity of the banana traders who once exported their goods to North America in the second half of the 19th century. Christchurch was built on a small hill near to the harbor and has witnessed many events. The first Spanish invaders, hostilities of former slaves, and British colonial rule. There's a splendid view from the hill above the city. We visit the former residence of Hollywood legend Errol Flynn. In 1947, he fell in love with this country and bought this small island. Christianity is the main religion of the local population who consist of the descendants of slaves from North America, often mixed with European and Asian blood. The Blue Mountains, breathtaking primeval nature with a hint of adventure. Wild fissured mountains whose highest peak is more than 2,000 meters high. The black gold of the Blue Mountains enjoys a legendary reputation among gourmets. It's mainly exported to Japan as the price it demands in Europe and North America is extremely high. Coffee has been cultivated on this Caribbean island for 280 years. And those familiar with the 007 novels by Ian Fleming must know that even James Bond drinks Blue Mountain Coffee. Travelling down into the valley, we visit Sangster's Old Jamaica, one of the country's oldest established rum factories. Rum, the sugar water of the Caribbean, has a tradition which is closely linked to the cultivation of sugarcane. Next, the road returns down to the coast. Port Royal is situated on a small strip of land at the entrance to the natural harbour basin of Kingston. The mighty Fort Charles was constructed at the island's most extreme point due to its strategic location. It's one of the most beautiful and best kept fortifications on the island.
Kingston is the capital of Jamaica. It's the island's political, economic and cultural centre. This former pirate stronghold is a lively mixture of joie de vivre and reggae music. In the centre of the hectic hustle and bustle of the capital is the marvellous Devon House, a Victorian building surrounded by a green swathe of tranquillity. Bob Marley was the uncrowned king of reggae. He died in 1981 and a museum commemorates his life. In 1534, after the Spaniards had established their first colonial capital of Sevilla La Nueva, they founded Spanish Town, the town on the level. Lover's Leap is the name of the rocky outcrop which contains a lighthouse. Legend has it that a pair of amorous slaves jumped from the clifftop to prevent their owner from separating them. Further to the west, the path leads to a hilly coastal road, to Treasure Beach, an ideal retreat for those who wish to enjoy water, fine scenery and peace. With a population of around 4,000, Black River is the regional capital of St. Elizabeth and is an important harbour town on the western side of the south coast. Elegant and noble buildings highlight the town's former prosperity. At the end of the century, the town was a busy trading centre for blue wood from which a dye is extracted to colour pelts and leather. In the harbour are the boats of the region's crab fishermen who earn a modest living from tasty crustacea. Close by in the small harbour at the mouth of the Black River, tourist boats are being prepared for the day's outing. The water appears to be black due to the darkness of the riverbed. Heron and other birds hide in the green of the riverside plants. But the main attraction that visitors come here to see is the alligator. Many of the river's tributaries are surrounded by mangrove trees which are firmly anchored below the water by sturdy roots. Soon the boat returns to the harbour. Negril. This small resort on Jamaica's western tip has become one of the Caribbean's most popular holiday destinations and from where fishermen set out to sea in tiny boats. Jamaica is one of the world's last paradises, an island of dreams. With tropical primeval forests, fascinating mountains, exotic plants, white sandy beaches, a beaming sun and scorching music. Nassau is the capital of New Providence Island, one of more than 700 islands in the Bahamas archipelago.
A tiny number of Bahamians live on this island that welcomes its visitors with splendid scenery and typical Caribbean joie de vivre. When the pirates of old were forced out of their hiding places on the island, British colonists and their black slaves came here from North America. Today their ancestors are more than happy with the island's booming tourism. This is the place for a perfect, dreamy holiday and the Caribbean is one of the most popular tourist destinations in the world. The horse and carriage returns to the harbour area, close to where various cruise ships are anchored. And Christopher Columbus surveys the harbour as though he's only just set foot on it. The statue of Queen Victoria is a reminder that in 1684 the islands were annexed by Britain. Indeed, it was only in 1973 that they gained their independence. Slaves carved the 65 steps of the Queen's staircase into the limestone of the town's hill. It's a very romantic setting. Pirates and hostilities by the French and Spaniards made it necessary to have good defences. So several forts were built at strategic locations. The slaves were unable to read or write and so the only time they could communicate was on Sundays during church services. It was then that they could talk and sing together. colored houses that look as though they're made of sugar icing adorn the streets and lanes. And Bahamian banks are well known in both America and Europe. Sometimes up to 11 huge cruise ships arrive here and thousands of tourists crowd into the busy shopping streets of the city center. It is then that the colourful Caribbean straw market really comes to life and wood carvers ply their trade. Cool drinks and tasty snacks make it easy to tolerate the heat and the frenzied activity with many reminders of the pirates who once lived here. The nearby caves of Arawak Cay outside the city were once inhabited by the Arawak Indians. Today, several restaurants are located here. Numerous hotel complexes line up at Cable Beach, many with a casino. Spacious pool areas, sandy beaches and a large variety of entertainment are guaranteed, attracting the rich and the famous. The botanical garden measures seven hectares and contains tropical flowers, bushes and exotic trees, and around 1,600 varieties of plant. Flowers and blossoms shine out in all the colours of the Caribbean, a true feast for the eye. Popular with small children too. On a small hill on Nassau's western perimeter is Fort Charlotte. Governor Lord Dunmore had this imposing fortress complex built in 1787 in order to protect the city, with 42 cannon at the ready.
jitneys are the names of the small buses that frequently travel through the city and to each corner of the island. They have a striking appearance. After half an hour's drive inland, we reach our destination. The Bacardi Rum Factory. Once owned by Cuba, this distillery was rebuilt here following the Cuban Revolution. We return to Nassau's West Beach. This is the location of Ardastra Gardens, a botanical and zoological garden covering two hectares. Its exotic trees and bushes provide good shade that is much appreciated by the local wildlife, who must get their sleep. While other creatures look on curiously, Feeding the parrots takes place several times a day, a thrill for both young and old alike. And the well-trained flamingos are particularly popular. Their trainer leads them into a small area where they pose for photos and parade in a circle. Paradise Island is the most modern and spectacular resort in the Bahamas. Atlantis, the largest entertainment oasis in the world, a fantasy world come true. It was here that South African hotel tycoon Sol Kurtzner created a mega luxury resort with an array of amazing LA-style casinos and entertainment facilities. The experience he gained from his South African Sun City resort contributed to the construction of this splendid water world that is situated between pink 23-story apartments. In the seawater basins of an inner courtyard, there are mantas, huge turtles, and more than 200 different kinds of marine life. Great entertainment for one and all. This exotic underwater world is omnipresent, in caves and glass tunnels, large and small, both skinny and fat. The walls of the subterranean rooms are decorated with paintings of fabulous beings. And the feeding of the sharks is a fascinating sight. Lagoons with palm trees, bathing areas, waterfalls, places for simply drifting, and chain bridges. There's something here for everyone. The underwater worlds here are exceptional. Water slides travel down from Mayan pyramids into various pools. Entertainment has no limit here, something that attracts visitors from all over the world. According to Plato, the legendary Atlantis lay somewhere between Spain and North Africa. But the Greek philosopher knew nothing of the New World. In a large pool outside the hotel, around 30 dolphins swim along with some of the guests. The legendary Atlantis, Las Vegas style. Versailles Gardens was created by the former owner of the island, American multimillionaire Hartington Harford. And a medieval cloister was built to impress his constant supply of girlfriends and occasional wives. He 
It takes around 20 minutes by boat to travel to the entrance of a sheltered bay, the Blue Lagoon. This is the home of several well-trained dolphins and a rendezvous with Flipper is about to begin. These intelligent creatures are delighted to perform the tricks that they've been taught. They have a good time and leap high over the heads of the people in the water and obey each of their trainer's commands. Our boat takes us to a number of uninhabited islands. Our first stop is Allen's Cay. Well, what's this? A large number of dragon-like iguanas. It's like being in primeval times. After a short journey, we arrive at our final destination, Channel K, one of the more than 365 sunny islands of the Exuma Kays. What a wonderful place to relax. Warm water and a friendly ray, a paradise-like place, an island of dreams. Another trip is about to begin. We're going to travel by yacht to a typical tiny Caribbean island, an island in the sun. Remote and one of many freckle-like caves in the blue and green glimmering ocean, situated in the center of the Bahamas. Magnificent sandy beaches and palm trees that bend in the wind. No wonder it was here that the hammock was invented, for sheer relaxation. The Bahamas, a name that conjures up isolated beaches and turquoise water, romantic sunsets and tropical nights. Pure pleasure. We journey through Havana, the Caribbean metropolis that for many years has become somewhat run down and neglected. Several fortresses once defended the gateway to the new world. The town, which lies in a natural harbor, soon became more important than the island's capital of Santiago and was systematically developed with buildings of stone construction. The cathedral is located in the most beautiful historic square in the heart of the old town. Everywhere there is joie de vivre and nowhere else are the cocktails mixed better. The Plaza de Amias is a splendid colonial square. And fine antique furniture is on display in the Segundo Cabo Palace. The magnificently renovated colonial palace of the Captain General today houses the city's museum with its impressive collection of statues, paintings and furniture. From the tower of the Castello de la Real Fuerza, the second oldest fortress in South America, is a good view of the harbour. La Habana, with its population of three million, is the capital, the heart of the island. An unbroken pulse at which both past and present collide.
everywhere there are small cafes, where not only aromatic Cuban coffee is served, but where also there's a large selection of cigars and cigarillos from which to choose. The old city palaces around the Plaza Vieja, the old square, have repeatedly been restored. These old timers are also closely associated with Cuba. Wealthy families of the Sugar Dynasty, heroes of the revolution, famous poets and intellectuals lie at rest at the Necropolis de Colón. Close by is the Plaza de la Revolución, where Fidel Castro once gave his many speeches. More than 2,000 workers constructed the Senate building, the Capitolio. A 94-meter-high dome crowns the building and tongue-in-cheek Cuban style in the exact center of the room, a 24-carat diamond marks the fictitious starting point of the motorway to Santiago. In front of the Capitolio, photographers and carriages await their next passengers, and also various animal entertainers. Whether it be the Teatro Marti, the old tobacco factory, the famous Bacardi House, or the Floridita Bar, everywhere there's a feeling of nostalgia. And when the daiquiri is served, one almost expects Fidel Castro or Ernest Hemingway to be seated at the next table. Piña del Rio. The red star and portraits of Che Guevara adorn modern Piña and in the old town, colorful buildings with beautiful pillared corridors demonstrate the former wealth of the country's independent tobacco growers. Almost every house has a story to tell, and fine ornaments demonstrate the artistic styles of bygone times. Here, time is of little import, and one begins to think in the same relaxed tempo as the smoke that rises from leisurely smoked cigars. And then, the evening, and life begins again. Music, dance rhythms and Latin temperament all combine and form the energy and lifeblood of the Cuban people. Now they are totally unrestrained. A visit to a tobacco factory is a must. Cuba's cigars are world famous and it's impossible to ignore the fascination of seeing the rolled tobacco leaves. On a tobacco plantation, we meet a famous tobacco planter who has granted us permission to visit. In the Casas de Cura, the precious leaves of the tobacco plants are sorted and hung to dry and ferment. The extensive, endless tobacco fields mean brown gold for the country. Nowhere else in Cuba does the tobacco thrive as it does here in the west of the country.
like the backs of massive elephants, strange earth formations emerge from the Sierra de los Oganos Valley, christened Valle de Vinales by the country's seafarers. These are the Magotes, the oldest geological formation in Cuba. Much weathered limestone peaks, which, supported by pillars, once covered a large complex of caves. Many caves collapsed, and only the hardest limestone remained. Fertile land evolved, and today the finest tobacco is cultivated here. In 1920, a huge Indian cave was discovered, Cueva del Indio. This perfect landscape resembles a Chinese watercolor, and the sun and rain combine to enrich this captivating canvas of color. The hills and ancient remains within this beautiful valley are more dramatic than anywhere else on the island. The route leads further into the southeast, deeper and deeper into the exotic world of this Caribbean island. On seven man-made islands in the center of the Chianaga de Zapata National Park is the Indian village of Guama. This untouched, swampy nature reserve with its dense mangrove forest vegetation is an ideal sanctuary for many rare water birds. A visit to the Nature Reserve's Biological Research Station is highly recommended. A knowledgeable guide escorts us through the unspoiled Nature Reserve in search of the unusual. And suddenly, we come across an amazing biological discovery a fish which was thought to have been extinct for many years. Visitors enjoy the peace that radiates from this Garden of Eden, welcome solitude in paradise. Constant, omnipresent state escort leads the way through the bio-reserve to track down the Cuban national bird, the tocororo. On the southern section of the peninsula stretch the Salinas, salty coastal landscapes that are home to the pink flamingo. There's also a crocodile breeding station. Proudly, the entrance exclaims, an idea of the revolution.
creatures live in the endless channels of the marshy peninsula. As though carved from stone, the crocodiles lie around lazily, but suddenly become active when feeding begins. Small boats return us to Guama, to a replica of the pre-Columbian village of the Saboni Indians. The journey continues further south, through endless fields of banana plants that are cultivated as part of the country's communist economy. Continuing through small, colorful, sleepy villages, over hilly country roads, past Cuban cowboys, and hordes of workers who harvest sugarcane with outdated machinery and transport. Finally, we reach Trinidad, the unofficial center of Cuba. In 1513, Trinidad was founded by the Spaniard Velasquez as a third settlement. In the 18th century and prior to the Spaniards' conquest of Mexico, the city experienced wealth and recognition through the cultivation of sugarcane. The luxurious palaces and villas of the sugar barons still make their mark on the city and characterize the style of bygone days. Short but heavy tropical rain showers add to the enchantment of the old town. Shimmering, damp, shiny stone facades and statues radiate an irresistible, dreamy charm. The drumming of the rain adds to our impression of an alluring legacy of several decades. Throughout the centuries, various religions have been practiced here, which in turn have influenced the island's unique beliefs. From the vast profits of sugarcane cultivation, the plantation owners built elegant buildings and had furniture and artifacts shipped in from Europe. Benefiting from the mild climate, lush vegetation spills across the courtyards of the villas with a green and tranquil beauty. The past remains as it was, as eventual economic decline appears to have frozen this place in time. Here, time stands both still and silent. Deep felt religious beliefs are held in high reverence. All historical roads wind around the main square, the Plaza Mayor. The palace on the Plaza Mayor was built in 1740 by the Earl Nicholas Brunet family, who lived there for many decades. The bell tower of the Iglesia La Santa Sima is Trinidad's landmark. In the former palace of the Sugar Baron Cantero is the Museo de Historia. The sense of what it must have been like for the plantation owners to live in this palace is overwhelming. Q 
Cuba and the Caribbean are a melting pot of colonial culture, an overgrown and abundant Garden of Eden, a paradise at the end of the world. <laughs>